second, let me try to uh, Okay, I got it. All right. Okay, uh, welcome uh, this evening. It's May the 7th, and uh, we are excited to uh, be here and to have our, um, our activators call. And just a few announcements that we want to make. Hey, I'm excited. We have a new app for our phone that you can download. So if you didn't get that uh, email, there, get it, download it, and I've started using it, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So tomorrow uh, afternoon, you should have an email. There's some training, I think 2 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, get on there, and there is going to be some training on how to use it. Uh, later, uh, in about an hour from now, Gabe Pearson is going to be doing a webinar tomorrow uh, evening. Uh, Donna Deegan doing a Zoom. There's lots of stuff to help you. And everybody has their own uh, way of sharing. And if you can pair up the right people with the right presenters, it's really going to build your business. Uh, this Wednesday, for those that are in Pennsylvania, uh, we have our Be Free. Now, that they're traveling all over the country, so make sure that you get to one of the Be Free five hours from a bunch of pro tens, uh, sharing what is really can be helpful to your business. Uh, we are having, also in Pennsylvania, May the 12th, we are having um, our virtual Super Saturday at Life Center in Mansfield, Pennsylvania, or in your living room. So... Uh, please be doing that. So uh, we are really excited, and I don't want to do a lot of announcements tonight because I want to give time to well, to uh, let me just uh, go back here and see if I can't uh, get everybody muted. Please uh, mute if you can. Oh, okay, there I got it muted. Okay, uh, so we uh, okay. So tonight we have a special guest, uh, David Meisner. I've met David a number of times. I love talking with him and sharing with him. Uh, David, uh, I love it. He's a great brother in the Lord, and it's just really a, a gift that we have him here on our team. Uh, he's a great trainer. He's a great brother. Uh, he has his bachelor's degree in uh, bachelor's of science in psychology, sociology. Uh, emphasis in neurophysiology. He has master's degrees in divinity. He has all, he's got just tons and tons and stuff of stuff he can hang on the wall. But in reality, his heart's so much better than everything that hangs on the wall. And that's going to come out tonight. Uh, he has worked as an ordained pastor also. He leads people. And it's the heart that he has that's really uh, going to, uh, that really makes me appreciate him. So, uh, I'm going to just introduce David uh, with his passion, uh, spiritually, uh, physically, relationally, professionally. It, it comes through. Uh, married to an incredible woman that also loves Jesus. They got horses. They do horse breeding. Uh, she's a microbiologist, a teacher, farmer. It's just kind of. It, I, I actually could take the whole time just describing how how blessed we are, uh, but. Uh, I'm not going to, so I'm going to actually turn it over to David, and uh, I'm going to mute myself. And um, so, um, David, are, can you uh, unmute yourself? Yep. And let's, uh, let's hear uh, what you can have to share uh, with our team. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Kurt, for that amazing introduction. And you're absolutely right. All the degrees and the letters after your name doesn't mean anything if your heart's not in the right place. And um, <clears throat> listen, uh, Kurt is an incredible team member here of this amazing team that Julie White leads. And uh, I'm so glad. I I'm so glad for Julie. Uh, I remember when she first, when I first enrolled, um, I was um, in a parking lot. The very next day, I got this phone call from. Uh, uh, out of state, Pennsylvania, and I answered it because if you're an entrepreneur, you answer just about every phone call that comes in. 
<clears throat> and she introduced herself. I've never met this woman before. She's in a few states over and she's just precious. And it meant so much to me. I, I remember exactly where I was. And I was in my pickup truck and when I was talking to Julie and it meant so much to me and she has such a great heart. And I love Julie that you have so many uh, competent and excellent leaders uh, in your business um, network that, that you can say, hey, I, I need, I'm gonna just sit back and, and watch my leaders uh, do some of this for a while. And by the way, if you haven't, if you weren't on Kurt's Zoom uh, last week or the team call for Mark Harris, um, let me, let me uh, encourage you to go back and listen to and, or watch those recordings. Uh, Kurt is a wealth of knowledge. I love his heart for the Lord and a heart for his people and his, his uh, enthusiasm and passion for employing uh, strong biblical principles uh, to this business and to his team. And thank you so much, Kurt, for your leadership. Um, I'm here tonight <clears throat> to talk about timing. Um, uh, we've got a couple of new distributors on, on uh, Cynthia and Jean. Uh, it was a blessing. Uh, Lena went to go spend some time with Cynthia today while I went to go uh, drive into the middle of Kansas and uh, do a presentation for Jean. Jeannie, that was, that was such a blessing for me to sit at that table. I had no idea what I'd walked into uh, until I shook that man's hand and, and um, what a blessing that was. I, I, I love doing this business. I remember when I would introduce Mark Harris to all these uh, world uh, ministers, pastors, uh, missionaries, and he would just sit back and enjoy. And I felt like I got the chance to do that today. And thank you so much, Jeannie. Uh, love uh, your heart and, and Larry's as well for the Lord and his people. Uh, I love um, encountering new people and their hearts. Now, I wanna say a couple of things. Jeannie just heard about, Jeannie and Larry uh, just heard about this maybe a month or so ago, and we're just so profoundly impacted by it. And thank you, Debbie Packard. You're there uh, with, uh, is that your son with you? All right, great. So glad, so glad to see you. And who's at the other table or at the other end of the couch? I guess you can't. That's all right. We'll talk later. So I'm so glad that you're on and uh, Stephanie Kaisman's team is on as well. Um, and Cynthia, you know, I want to talk about timing and I'm so glad Cynthia's on because when I shared this with her four years ago, the timing was not right. And um, I, I shared this before on one of Julie's meetings is, you know, we, one of the reasons I, I had such a dislike of network marketing uh, before I got into it was uh, I, I'd had it done incorrectly. Uh, pe people who were sh trying to share with me and I just would look at them and I'd encounter their presentation. I'm like, who are you and what have you done with my friend? Uh, because you're not the same guy that I've known for five, 10 years. You're not the same person I've done ministry with. What happened to you? And um, so I had a very negative view of network marketing, didn't want to have anything to do with it until a good friend of mine invited me to a meeting and I took a look at it because I trusted him and um, I loved him. And that's how this works. And what I'm getting at is when Cynthia, when I first shared this with Cynthia and her husband about four years ago, uh, the timing wasn't right. So did I keep badgering them and say, you know, no, I didn't. I hope not. Did I, Cynthia? I didn't. I, did I keep that? No, I didn't keep badgering you. So I, I want to treat people the way that I would like to be treated, I, with honor and respect. And so when I'm sharing with somebody, I'm listening to what they're saying, and more importantly, I'm watching their nonverbal communication. And if they're telling me that they're not interested, I stop right away. And I, I wanna respect the timing um, aspect of what's going on here. And I know that protanum will help any mammal. I, I just know that. I know enough about the science. I've, I've heard dozens and dozens of testimonies firsthand and heard hundreds and thousands uh, secondhand, um, to know that, that this will help any mammal. And so I'm confident in that. I walk in that confidence and I want to project that confidence. And I also want to project that I respect a person's timing. And if the timing's not right for them, I, I you know, I'll, I'll change the subject and say, hey, um, 
you know, how's your family doing? How's your ministry going? How's your job going? How's your health? You know, j- just change the subject. And, and when somebody realizes, a lot of times people are seeing whether you're going to respect them or not, or if you're just trying to close a commission. And, and when, they, when they make that decision in their mind <clears throat> that you're not just trying to use them for commission or, or quick buck or whatever, um, they're way more likely to take your presentation seriously or this product. And if you do your presentation properly, um, your, your first contact at least, and you're listening to them and, and uh, you're watching, they're going to give you cues as to if they want to know more information. Um, and then so you listen to that and you show that you respect them. Another aspect of timing, if you just came on, if you wouldn't mind just muting your microphone, because we can hear a lot of the background noise and it, it's kind of distracting. So thank you so much. Um, I had to first learn that when I first started using Zoom too. So no worries. It's, it's a, there's a learning curve. Um, so you want to listen to a person's need when you're talking with them. Um, a lot of people will tell you where their, their need is, whether it's a health need or a financial need or, or a combination of both. And you uh, make yourself a student of network marketing so that you become, uh, you, ha- you build up your resource toolbox. <clears throat> so you have a lot to pull from. And so you're, you're waiting for the right time w- with people and, and you're treating them um, you know, you're, you're expressing that to them so they, they know. Um, so one of the things, you know, I got to sit on, set in on uh, one of our new Pro 3, Stephanie Keisman's uh, meetings last night, and she had her team there. <clears throat> and um, she was talking about um, how, to, how to gauge a person's readiness. And you're really looking for ripe fruit you're looking for um, when the time is right, so to speak. And you're, you're, you're listening to them, you're, you're engaging them, and um, you're letting them know that your relationship with them is more important than if they ever enroll as a customer or a distributor or anything else. And so you, you, wanna, you wanna make your, yourself a student, not only of this business and the products, but of people as well. <clears throat> And so you're, you're looking for the right timing, you're listening for cues, and people will let you know. Um, I heard a quote from one of our uh, newer distributors, Danielle. Um, she said, um, we have to be patient with the process. And a lot of times, especially when we're new, uh, we're, we're anxious about the success. Um, we, we have a list of people that, that we wanna share this with. And, and immediately when we see that ABC primetime, we're not only thinking of ourselves, but we're naturally thinking of others as well. And this person could use this and this person and this person and this person. We make mental notes. We create a mental list of people that we know could benefit from uh, uh, encountering, engaging with this product. And um, one of the things we need to do is, is um, in terms of uh, doing those things is we need to step back and realize that network marketing is not sales. Successful network marketing is not sales like you're selling uh, a car. And I've heard some, one person describe it as sales is trying to convince somebody that they need something that they don't think that they need. And that is absolutely not what we're doing here. So we're being patient with the process. We know that over the course of time, eventually somebody is going to say yes. Uh, Seth Campbell talks about putting people on a conveyor belt or, or being at high noon. Um, you know, some people, when we are in a room full of people, some people might be at 1159 and they're ready. And this is just what they needed. Um, what you just said was just what they needed in order to bring them to high noon. But other people might be at nine, six, three o'clock, one o'clock. We don't know. But if we are if we treat them respectfully and we do this well and professionally, um, it's just a matter of time before they reach high noon. Some people, uh, for, for me, me, for instance, I was ready after I saw that ABC primetime. After I heard Jackie Shepard's testimony and saw the ABC primetime, boom, I was at high noon. And then when she shared the comp plan and, and you know, the, the income statements, I, w- I, was at, I was past midnight. I'm like, stop the stop the presentation I want to enroll. So that, that was just me, but because that's where my timing was. 
Um, other people, they take four years. Um, and I, you know, I had somebody, I was sitting in a coffee shop about six months ago and somebody came up to me and they said, David, are, are you doing that, that, that thing still? And I said, yes. And the fact that, that she had to ask if I was still doing it showed me that when she told me she was not interested three years ago, this was for this person, I backed off and I respected and I still, I still, uh, uh, valued our relationship. I still uh, engaged in our friendship and cultivated that. Um, so when she was ready, she came to me and, and she, you know, she remembered that I treated her respectfully. And so within a half an hour of her asking me that question, I was in her dining room enrolling her and her daughter on this, on this product. And, um, you know, other people, you know, everybody's at a different point in time and we just need to be ready to listen to them. Uh, this is a business about people. It's about relationships. Uh, people, uh, you know, we get sold all the time. Uh, we get bombarded by marketing. I, I mean, it, somebody, somebody said we get hit with 17,000 brand names over the course of a day. And we, we, our brain hits, takes them in consciously, but most of them subconsciously. Think about the tabs on your, on your jeans or your, your shoes or whatever. You know, your computer that you're looking at now has a logo on it. You know, we're getting hit by these images and messages all the time. And so, and, and we've had enough experience um, being let down that, that we're, we're pretty skeptical society. And for good reason, we've got a lot of evidence to support that position. And so we need to remember that even with people who know us and love us, there's still, there's, they're, they might be like, well, David, I, I love you and I respect you, but um, not sure about this product just yet. That's fine. You know, I, I know what I know. I'm, I'm bulletproof. I'm, somebody could, you know, launch tanks at me. You know, when I'm, when I'm in a presentation, people are sometimes apologetic about asking me, you know, hard questions. And I'm like, hey, Aaron, I'm like, no, uh, don't worry about it. I've heard it all throw it at me. I, I'm, I'm not offended. You know, give me your skepticism, give me your hard questions. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, mock you or I'm not going to um, try to make you feel bad for asking, you know, skeptical questions. That that's, that's just, there's, I don't have a problem with that. And I don't get ruffled with that anymore. Um, I used to take it a little personally sometimes, but you know, I, I just don't, I just don't anymore. <laughs> Um, this is this is about you know just respecting people, understanding that that we live in a skeptical society, um, and and just working with people. And when people realize that you're not going to just toss them to the side if they don't want to buy your thing, your or 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 they they start you know maybe they see say some disparaging things about pyramid schemes and snake oil and you're you've been drinking Kool Aid. You know that's that's fine. I, you know, I, I just don't get ruffled at that anymore. And once they, once they throw their worst at me and I still love them and I'm, I, I still want to be friends with them, you know, then it, it kind of disarms them. They're like, wow, wait a second. Maybe I need to take another look at this. Right. And so let me encourage you, especially if you're new, some of you are newer on here. Um, don't be discouraged by the nose. Listen, <clears throat> I think uh, other than Kurt and Julie, I've probably heard more no's than perhaps all of you put together, with the exception of Kurt and Julie. Uh, I'm, I'm just guessing, I'm just throwing that out. And so it doesn't bother me, it really doesn't. Uh, I know what this product does, I, I'm absolutely convinced. Of, I know what it does, and I know that the business is real too. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not something where you sign up and then you tell some of your family and Uncle Joe over here who's done network marketing before, he's going to make you a million dollars. You know, he's, he's probably not. <laughs> you know, you, you're, that person in your family that you thought would kill this and totally do this with you, they're like, no, I don't want to be a part of your pyramid scheme. Besides, why would I take advice from you? You know, I don't see you as a successful business person or necessarily the healthiest person I've known. But, you know, what you're doing... It, and, and it's easy to get discouraged from that right away. And so we don't treat this as a hobby that, well, I'll kind of try it out and see how it goes. And, and if it doesn't go okay, I, I'm only out a little bit of money and I've still got some of this product. No, we take it seriously. If you, you know, would you want your physician who is working on you to have just 
purchased a degree. <laughs> no, you want them to go through, you know, some, some training, right? And so, um, you know, and so that part of what I want to encourage now is, is the third party dynamic um, of bringing that into the presentations. Um, I know, you know, when I first signed up, I signed up that night. In fact, the guy who brought me had to enroll because he hadn't even enrolled yet in order to get the commission for me enrolling, he had to enroll. So I enrolled and the night I got home, nobody told me this and I went home and I email blasted about 35 people I was actively doing ministry, in, you know, with, with, and, um, how, do you know how many, uh, responded to me? I, I sent them a link to the ABC prime time. I said, Hey, I'm starting a new business. Take a look at this. Zero. Nobody <laughs> responded to me. And I, burned all 35 of those people right away my closest people i was working with and so it, it's take it took months and even a couple of years to have some of those people come around again i just i just cooked them right off my list um but people are like the dust and they're everywhere and part of the thing i love about this business is I have something precious that I can offer to people. So some of you have done uh, ministry and evangelistic ministry before. And if you've done any kind of study and, and, and training on doing evangelism, you know, uh, Billy Graham's um, ministry did uh, a long-term study on this. And they found that people, most people had to have an average of about nine significant encounters with, with somebody um, experiences with someone before they were really ready to accept Christ and take that first step of faith in, in justifying faith and um, nine encounters. And what do we do when we, when we're sharing uh, life vantage, if one, it, sometimes if, if a person says no one time, we're like, Oh my gosh, do they still like me? You know, it, you know, what am I going to do? That's the fourth person in a row to say no. I mean, imagine, do evangelists work like that? Not the successful ones. They realize that proper evangelism is really relational evangelism. There's stuff you can do on the street, and, and, and God uses that absolutely, without a doubt. Um, but the most effective and long-lasting uh, discipleship method of evangelism is relational evangelism. You know, there's people that uh, my family and I have just developed relationships, people who don't know the Lord, they don't walk with the Lord. We've just take, taken the time to develop relationships with them so that we can speak into their lives. And when their marriage hit a crisis, guess who was the first one, who, the first one they called? It was us. You know, our phones were burning up and it's like 10 o'clock at night. Get over here. My wife's leaving and I'm about to kill somebody, you know? So we were over there because we had set the relationship down. So this is about timing, right? And so not everybody's gonna be ready to hear about you know, something that can reduce your oxidative stress levels by an average of 40% in 30 days and up to 120% or, or up to 70% in 120 days. They may not be ready to hear about that right, right away. Um, you know, that there's a lot of stuff, a lot of traffic going on, what's going on with my friend, they're in a network marketing thing, not sure if they're still gonna value my relation, our relationship and not even sure about this product. And so there's, they're thinking about a bunch of things. And so you just got to have patience with that. And you so, Hey, I, you know, you, you just, you just introduce it to them and you, then you look, you're watching. If they're given nonverbal cues, like, you know, I'm not ready to hear about that right now. Say, yeah, we're really excited about it, you know, but how are you doing? You know, and you change the subject, right? If they're not ready, if they're not, if they're telling you they're not ready, then don't push it, drop it, drop it, wait till the next opportunity. And I'll, I'll guarantee you what, I'll gu guarantee you something, they're watching you. They're watching you to see what this does. Are, is your health going to improve? Are you going to start taking uh, your health seriously? Are you going to um, start to be, uh, are you going to stay with this? Or is this just a flash in the pan kind of thing that you're excited, you're hoping you're going to get rich quick and it's not going to work in a few months and you're going to quit? You know, we're watching you. You know, you, everybody you've ever shared this with is watching you. If they, if they haven't said yes, what, you know, especially if they have said yes, but if they've said no, they're watching you. They're, they're watching to see if this is real and I'll get, I guarantee you they're Googling it. 
you know, so, so do a good job with your first, um, your first impression that you give about this. Um, the next obvious thing that about timing is with the, this business, uh, the Harvard Business School has a master's degree in network marketing. They studied uh, network marketing companies across the world. And what they were looking at was at what point did that company really take off, right? It, okay, so what point did Amway take off? At what point did Melaleuca take off? At what point did Herbalife take off or whoever? And they, they found that after a company reached about 160 distributors, in any country, the United States, Japan, wherever, when they hit 160 in that co company, they hit what's called critical mass, and then they did what's called a hockey stick. The graph of growth, the gross sales took off. I mean, exponential growth in a very quick point of time. And every company has gone through that at about an average of 160 distributors. And Melaleuca, Amway, Herbalife, et cetera, they've all, hit critical mass and they peaked and then they're, they're plateaued. Now there's some fine products that they have and, and people can still work, make money, but that critical mass, that exponential growth curve, point in the curve has already happened. It's past history. In the United States, we have less than 80,000 distributors. Okay. We're about halfway to critical mass, and we are growing. I think f f February, March, and April were record months for Life Vantage. And so we are quickly approaching, accelerating towards critical mass. And once we hit that, it's going to be like a wave. And if you've ever gone surfing, if you're standing on the beach and the wave comes, guess what? It's too late. <laughs> It's too late. In order to catch that wave as a surfer, you've got to paddle out and you've got to keep paddling. You can't just paddle out and sit there and watch it go by. You've got to paddle out and you've got to keep, you've got to keep paddling. You've got to position yourself in such a way that you can ride that wave. And we're about at that point. I, I, I've heard estimates from anywhere between one and between one and the next three years, uh, we're going to be at critical mass. And if you're paddling out there and you position yourself correctly, you're, you're doing the work that you need to right now. You're reading the, bull, the blueprint, which will come in your new distributors packs, uh, Jeannie and Cynthia. Um, you're, you read that blueprint. That blueprint is the proven plan that our elite distributors, the, just the basic things that they did in order to reach those elite ranks. And it's not, you can't just do those for a month or two and, and think that, oh my goodness, I, I'm going to be, you know, rolling in the dough. This is consistently over time. It typically takes about 90 days of consistent effort for you to start to um, get off the ground with your business. It's like taxing uh, on, for takeoff on a runway. You know, you, you've got to keep going and you can't go halfway down the runway for a little bit and say, oh man, I'm not, I'm not flying yet. I'm just going to throttle back. You got to keep that, that thrust going so that you can achieve lift at just the right time. And if you do this and if you're patient with the process and you're treating people with honor and respect and you're, you're keeping them on that, that con, uh, conveyor belt, so to speak, and some might be placed on the four-year plan, some might be on the few days plan or a couple hours plan uh, before they're ready to come off the, the conveyor belt and, 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 uh, and, and try and enroll. So if you, if you are patient with that process and you realize that even the top earners in our company, all of them had to, had to um, extend a, a consistent level of, of effort over a course of period of time. And that's when their business began to take off and their business began to hit critical mass. That's an exciting time when you, when you begin to get lift and you begin to get altitude. Now, some people's temptation is once they get altitude, say, let's say you hit pro three and, and you're, you're starting to get some air. It's like, all right, I'm flying now. I can coast back now and sit back and watch the other people work. Mm -mm, no, you got to keep on the thrust. You got to keep that thing going if you, cause you got to generate more lift before you can reach, reach cruising altitude. And cruising altitude, honestly, is wherever you want to be. You look at the average um, monthly incomes um, on the earnings claim statement, which by the way, that earnings claim statement, uh, 
were traded on the NASDAQ, so we're subject to the Security and Exchange Committee reviewing all of our numbers. And if one of the, if those numbers are off, somebody's uh, losing a job, going to jail, or the company's going under, depending on the severity, um, but those numbers are solid. And as we rank advance through the company, we, those average monthly uh, things were, were absolutely real for us. Those numbers were right on. And so, or, you know, within a range, plus or minus. So, um, you know, if you're say, if you say, man, if I could just have $500 a month uh, residually through this thing, with this thing, that would change my world and I would be totally satisfied. <clears throat> um, then, you, then you get to pro three and then you build some other people who are building, you know, consistently. And then you can, then that's your cruising altitude. But if you say, you know, I want to I want to take care of all of my debt and I want to get to 2500 a month you get to pro 5 you know and you build that so that you've got teams that, that that will work independently of you and then that's your cruising altitude but if you have a bigger vision if you have a vision for changing lives across the globe sowing into ministries orphanages, sex trafficking ministries, evangelistic ministries, uh, bible translation ministries, whatever um, and you say the vision that I have in my mind is too big for me to do on my own. Therefore, it must be inspired by the Lord. And, and I have to do my part. I have to partner with him, you know, to, to, do, to do this and then watch things happen. And, and that's, if your heart is in the right place, you realize that, you know, God might be, have given this to you in order to challenge some of your fear of man and increase your faith. And uh, when the Lord sees us take a step of faith, that delights him. Imagine if you had children and, and you watch your babies begin to take their first steps, right? <laughs> Isn't that an exciting time? You know, when they hit those milestones of walking or diaper train, you know, potty training, praise the Lord for potty training, or eating on their own, or cleaning their rooms, or tying their shoes, or whatever, reading for the first time, that's exciting. And so, and so as a parent, you want to help magnify your children's efforts. I, I don't want to just um, have my children stand on my shoulders. I want to launch them up into the air, way beyond wherever ever, where I could go. And so, I realize that in order to do things like that, um, I've got to see, I've got to partner with the Lord and trust him and not just, you know, as we, when we're younger, we tend to have big dreams about where we're going to go, what we're going to do, the lives we're going to impact, the influence that we're going to have. And then as we get older and, and life hits us and the challenges of the flesh and the relational stuff and all the traffic in our heart, we tend to lower our expectations sometimes quite a bit, and we, quite honestly, we settle for a level of mediocrity we used to deride when we were younger. You know, think about when you were younger and you, th and, and you looked at some adults sometime and they just seemed to be a shell. You know, some men that you might have looked at looked like lions in a cage, you know, and you're wondering what it, whatever happened to those people, how could they settle for such a mediocre um, life and, and there's no vibrancy in them, there's no passion, what happened to them? I wanna make sure that never happens to me. And then, you know what, if you don't feed that fire, over the course of years, all of a sudden, you're wondering what the heck happened to the last few decades. You know, this is an opportunity. You need to ask yourself, Lord, did you place this in my life um, to give me an opportunity to really see beyond what I could ever dream of or imagine could happen in my own strength? I'm going to trust you, Lord. And when people say no, I'm not going to get all bent out of shape and, and because my identity is in you. You're the one who, who gave me the calling. You're the one who gave me breath in my lungs. You're the one who gives me the hope and the promise of life and life eternal. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to have you as my father who is speaking into my identity. You're the one who gives me my identity and tells me who I am and whose I am. And if, if somebody else says no or they don't understand, they don't get this thing I'm doing, that's fine. No, I, I don't, it's not a big deal. 
It's not a big deal. I'm going to love them. And, and I know what this could do for them and their family. And I'm just going to keep relationship with them. And I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to make it weird because they said no to my pyramid scheme or whatever. I'm just going to, I'm just going to love them. Lord, help me to see people the way that you do. Help me to have grace for people the way that you have grace for me. This is a powerful business. This is a powerful tool that the Lord has given to us. You know, people are afraid. They're walking around afraid of dying. They're afraid of insignificance. You know, we're, we're afraid of sickness, of weakness, and we have something that can help break that. We have, we have uh, products that can break um, the stranglehold of sickness and disease and, and, and slothfulness in our lives. And we have a business model that is, you know, the more I looked at it, as I learned about it, I'm like, Jesus was probably the first network marketer, right? So he had, he had Peter, James, and John, he spent a lot of time with, and then he had the rest of his discipleship group. And then there were people beyond that. And then there was everybody else, right? And so he taught Peter, James, and John and the rest of his disciples how to become disciple makers. So he was wanting to replicate his effort on earth through us, through people like Peter. Remember how much Peter screwed up? So be gentle with yourself. Look at the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Joseph and Moses and David and all of those people. Look at Jesus's genealogy, right? God can use anyone who has the desire and the right heart. And, and we, we just need to know where our identity comes from. So I don't even know what time it is. It's 737. I appreciate you guys being on here so much. Um, thank you for listening. I want to just kind of open it up now to any questions. Kurt, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. Timing, just a lot of great stuff in that. Um, would like to open up for questions. If you have a question, just unmute yourself, and um, we will uh, get a little bit more wisdom from uh, my brother David. So, uh, I did. I, I was taking notes, David, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, we all... We'll record this. Uh, hopefully it all, that all goes well and we'll have it up on the activators because um, I couldn't take notes quite fast enough. So uh, very good. Who's got a question? Okay. All right. It is so great to see you all on here and um, uh, love seeing these, some of these familiar faces. It's so good to see you all. Uh, we went from winter to summer in about two and a half weeks here in Kansas City. And my room is at about 84 degrees. I'm going to open up the windows and turn on the attic fan and get some fresh air in here. Um, if you have any questions um, uh, and you're on my team, of course, you know how to reach me. Uh, you can reach Kurt. We've got the activators page. There are so many exciting things coming um, to bear on our, with our company, so many opportunities. Uh, so God bless you all. Okay. And thank you so much. Just your, uh, your help on timing and just having the heart. Uh, a couple of takeaways that I really got uh, was just to love and honor people. And if you do that, the timing eventually comes around for them. And uh, so uh, do the right thing every day. And if you do the right thing every day, um, your business is going to just begin to get traction and take, uh, take hold. So uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, God bless you all. And uh, everyone have a great, great week. Uh, make sure that you uh, stay plugged in. Again, we have lots of stuff for you to help you build your team as well as a new app. Okay, so uh, check it out. And uh, everyone, you have a great evening. Take care.